Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have an update on the Chad Dorman case. If you don't remember who that is, that is the Ohio man that um, killed all three of his young boys. So I'm gonna, there has been a, doc, a new document released. It is the um, Bill of Particulars. So we know more about what happened that day. Um, lots of speculation in this case already. Lots of people trying to figure out what happened. Lots of stories out there. However, this is what happened. Um, I'm just going to read it. I will post the link to this document down below. But I just kind of want to explain as we're going through this, the type of man that this family was living with. I've already kind of given the red flags of him. I mean, in this document just proves to me that he was the kind of man that was his way or the highway. He was king of the castle. You did what he said. You don't go against him. What he says goes. So on or about June 15th at 1965 Laurel Lindell Road, New Richmond, Ohio, in Claremont County, Ohio, the defendant did purposely and with prior calculation and design cause the death of his three children and all three children were under the age of 13. On June 15th, the defendant returned early from work. Now it doesn't say why. Um, I know my opinion was that he probably had that house bugged, videoed, audio. I'm not sure. That is not a fact. That is just my opinion. That is what they do. Um, I've also heard that he was fired that day, and that's why he came home early. So I'm not really sure what is true. We just know that he came home early on this day whether she was packing or not I don't know it doesn't say but um, it's kind of what I feel like maybe could have been happening so he returned home from work and he demanded that him his wife and his three boys all go and take a nap he did not force his stepdaughter, uh, her daughter, he did not force her to go take a nap. She was in the bed or in the living room, <clears throat> sorry, watching TV. So he demands they all take a nap. She's in the living room watching TV. At some point when they were sleeping, he got out of bed opened the gun safe next to the bed, removed a Marlin model HC 22 rifle from the gun safe and a loaded magazine. The defendant then inserted the magazine into the rifle and shot his son. It's got a black line over the name. So those are the two that I can't figure out. I don't know which one is which. Um, someone did say that one of the kids was inside the home. That seems to be true. And then he carried that boy outside. So he saw, he shot twice. 
immediately the mother began to render aid and started yelling for the other two children to start running. Prior to the shooting, there had to have been some yelling. I'm thinking maybe she woke up and saw what he was doing and started yelling because the daughter, Alexis, ran to the master bedroom before the shooting and she witnessed it. <clears throat> So she, the daughter immediately began to run and indicated that one of the boys went the wrong way. He went out the back and towards a field. She ran after him and immediately started screaming for him to keep running. She witnessed Chad Dorman chase after one of the kids and witnessed him shooting as the kid fled. He was struck in the back, knocking him to the ground. She then watched him walk over to him. He turned around and looked at Alexis, turned back around aimed and fired into the head at close range. She then turned and fled back into the residence where she picked up the youngest child, Chase, who was three, and attempted to flee the residence with him. As she attempted to flee, the defendant, Chad, returned to the residence and heard Chase crying. So my thinking is that she ran back into the house, took the three-year-old and maybe tried hiding with him and he started crying. Only thing I can kind of think that makes sense here. And when he started crying, she took off running down the street. He caught up to them, raised the rifle, and pointed it right at her head. He demanded that she put Chase down. She begged him not to shoot her, and she put Chase down. She then witnessed Chad attempt to in the head. However, the gun did not fire and it appeared he was out of ammunition. Chase then fled to his mother, who was on the side yard attempting to render aid to one of the boys. I'm thinking the first one. After the defendant held the rifle to Alexis's head, she proceeded to flee towards the Monroe Township Fire Department. She was stopped by a passerby, that was the woman that called 911, and advised the witness that her father was quote unquote killing everyone. As she continued to flee towards the fire department, oh, killing him as she continued to flee towards the fire department, Alexis has suffered serious psychological harm as a result of the defendant's actions. At some point, the defendant went back out to the field and carried the other boy back to the side of the residence and laid his body in the yard where now all three children were ultimately found. After Blank fled, Blank was able to pick up, okay, so maybe after Alexis fled, Laura was able to pick up Chase Ch and Chad. The defendant and Laura engaged in a physical altercation over, I'm thinking maybe Chase, during which the defendant attempted to pull Chase from Laura's grasp, going as far as to bite her 
to get her to let him go. After the altercation, Laura grabbed the firearm, placing the thumb, her thumb, over the barrel. Chad shot Laura through the thumb, and after being shot and bit, she ultimately dropped Chase. During the chaos, the defendant, Chad, also attempted to reload his firearm. The defendant then proceeded to chase, shooting him at close range once in the head. He, Chad, I'm thinking, ultimately laid, oh no, 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 Chase was ultimately laid in the same area as his brothers on the side of, on the, side of the residence. After the defendant, all three boys, he sat on the side stoop of the residence and calmly watched Laura undertake futile life-saving measures on all three of her children. Now I had said in one of my previous videos that I didn't see anybody working on those kids. Obviously she was, we just couldn't see that in the body cam. Um, I was thinking maybe he was threatening her if she did. Um, I don't know. So Chase was shot one time at close range in the head while the other two were both shot four times. All three boys died as a result of their injuries. Um, the, the defendant made multiple statements to law enforcement, such as, I did it, take me to jail, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have shot and, I shouldn't have shot and killed them. The defendant also gave a statement during an audio and video recorded in interview during which he admitted to having been thinking about shooting his boys since October. That's nine months. Why didn't you just leave? What is the problem here? Because, like I said before, those words, if I can't have you, nobody can. Those are some dangerous words. And if they're ever said to you, you really need to go you need to figure out a way to go as fast as you can. You don't worry about your stuff. Um, packing anything that you're going to want, you fight in court. You, you, you fight during your divorce or you take them to court. Or you go take police with you to go get your stuff. Your stuff is not as important as your life. You can get new stuff. If you just have to take your babies and go and leave everything, that's what you gotta do. Stuff can be replaced. You cannot be. Um, this, this case is, um, I followed many cases in my day. I've just now started talking about them, but I make notes on every single case I watch all the way back to the O.J. Simpson. I would write down anything that I thought was like bad, um, important, something that I would need to look back at just for myself. I mean, lots of notes on Gabby Petito's case, on Kylie Rodney's. I've covered, not that I've covered, but I have literally and and gave, engrossed myself in these cases only now I'm just starting to come forward talking about them but this one hurts all of this is very familiar to me um I can't imagine what Laura Dorman is going through Alexis I can't imagine what they are going through 
I pray for them um, every night. I really hope that that they can get through this. You're never gonna get over it, but I just really pray that she can get through it. Um, so for now, I will put the link to the to that document in my description box. Um, and until we hear some new news, I will see you guys on my next video. Bye.